all new 2024 Ford Ranger Raptor. Quick correction, this is my Ranger Raptor. That's right, I just bought it. In this video, we're gonna check out all the features and then put it to the test right here at our Peninsula Proving Grounds. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. It's finally here. The truck that I ordered in May of 2023 was supposed to be built in October, then November, then December, somehow got pushed to February, and here we are in April of 2024, and I finally have my all new 2024 Ford Ranger Raptor. Woo! <laughs> and just look at this thing. It's ridiculous in all the good ways. I love the massive fender flares, this big Ford on the front, as though you would have any mistake as to what this is. And then of course it also says Raptor on the back. And then you also get vents up here, vent over here. Everything is functional on this truck. It's not just for looks. This is a proper off-road truck. Or at least that's what Ford is telling us. And based on their history, I would have no reason to not believe it. The original Raptor was a huge success for Ford. It created a whole new segment of action-packed lifestyle trucks. And this just continues it, but now in a fun size package. Okay, let's be completely honest. This is the size of an F-150 from a decade ago. Now this isn't my first rodeo. I have owned a number of Ford trucks in the recent past. I had a Maverick FX4, and that was followed by a 2022 Ranger Tremor. So I actually owned the previous generation Ranger, which I did trade in on this one. Both those trucks were really good in terms of performance versus features. And overall, they didn't have a lot of frills. They were just honest, hardworking trucks. This truck has a lot going on, and we're gonna dig into that over several videos. This first video just kind of will share with you what we have here. How does it differ from my previous Tremor, and where does it fit in the marketplace? So with all that said, let's dig in. The first thing you'll notice is the track. It's really wide. In fact, width is 79 inches, three inches or seven and a half centimeters wider than the new non-Raptor Ranger and it's six inches or 15 centimeters wider than my 2022 Tremor. But it's actually an inch less in length compared to the old one at just over 210 inches. The Raptor comes from the factory basically one way, and that's fully loaded. It has B&O sound, a large 12.4 inch tablet display, digital gauges, a tow package, and leather seats. Though I did add the spray and bed liner and mud flaps. I didn't have those on my Tremor and I kind of regretted it. Prices you see it here, 57,690 US dollars, including destination. Of course, dealers are gonna add additional dealer markups on these trucks. They are in very limited supply. So you can expect to pay 10 to 20 grand more if you really want one of these, and if you can find it. Now let's see if this new Ranger Raptor is worth all of the fuss. Under the hood is a twin turbocharged three liter V6. This produces a peak 405 horsepower and 430 pound-feet of torque. Of course, we get 13 more horsepower than our UK cousins. Obviously, that's because this is America. We do that kind of stuff here. It is connected to a full-time four-wheel drive system with an on-demand two-speed transfer case and a 10-speed automatic transmission. EPA rates this setup at 16 miles to the gallon in the city and 18 on the highway which is very close to what I got on my Ranger Tremor Edition, and that one has two fewer cylinders and one fewer turbo. The list of standard off-road equipment that this comes with is a long one, so here's some of the highlights. Recovery hooks all around, locking differentials in both the front and the rear. The tire that the Raptor comes standard with is the BFG K03. Now this is a follow-up to the very popular K02 all-terrain. Uh, this is a 33-inch tire, and it is a 285-70 R17. I do love this wheel design. A couple notes on this tire. First, it's a load range of C, so it's not a heavy-duty tire, but it does have three-peak rating for ice and snow. Um, I've never actually driven on the KO3s before, so I'm definitely going to 
look forward to getting some wheel time with these. It also has a couple beefy bash plates in the front and covering the transmission. But covering the fuel tank, that plate is actually thick plastic for some reason. Ground clearance is 10.7 inches, which is actually three inches less than the Bronco Raptor, but an inch more than my Ranger Tremor. The shocks are two and a half inch Fox live valve internal bypass units on all corners. Up front, you get coilovers. In the back, you get piggyback reservoirs. You can also use the various drive modes to adjust the shock performance on and off road. In the back, you also get a Watts link setup to help keep the wheels planted in the corners. All new Rangers come in a crew cab with a short bed. This Raptor is no different. The bed is five feet in length, width is 44.8 inches. You can even fit a single sheet of plywood between the wheel wells, which is nice, though it will be hanging out the back. Max payload, including passengers, is 1,658 pounds, or 615 kilograms. In the back here, you do get a nicely damped gate, it has a couple of clamp spots, which is handy if you need to make some quick cuts on the job site. Power in the bed is 120 volts or 400 watts, as well as a DC 12 volt. So you're not gonna be running a welder off of this setup, but it is good for powering everyday accessories like a portable fridge if you're gonna do some overlanding. Towing is limited to 5,510 pounds or 2,500 kilograms, which is quite a lot less than the 7,500 pounds that you can tow with the standard Ranger and even my old 2022 Tremor. It does include a standard tow package, which includes a hitch, the wiring, and a brake controller. Part of the reduced capability is due to weight. This Ranger Raptor has a curb weight of 5,300 pounds or 2,400 kilograms. That's 900 pounds more than a standard trim Ranger. The rest is due to the suspension setup. This is more designed for fun than it is for work. But still, over 5,000 pounds, that should be plenty for most people. With that kind of capacity, you can easily tow a teardrop trailer or even another car on a flatbed. Like the Tremor Edition that I traded in, this one also has side steps. But these are bolted with only three bolts as opposed to the six. What is it, two, four, six? Yeah, it was six on the other one. And also, uh, this is higher. It's more flush with the body. So I don't think this is going to be as obtrusive off-road. For passengers, you can fit up to three people back here. This is only available as a crew cab. Flips up if you want some extra bins. That bin's actually a little larger than the old Ranger, but this format is very similar to the old Ranger. I would personally prefer a flat floor with this up, but you know, that's fine. Over here, you get a pull down armrest with integrated cup holders. The leather is really nice. Uh, now let's see if I fit. Oh yeah. 6'1", legs torso proportionate. This is where I'd be if I were driving, and I actually have a little bit of room here, though not much. It's definitely tight. Uh, down here, I do get power, USB-A, USB-C, as well as AC 120 volt, which shares an inverter with the one in the trunk. Sitting very high, I have excellent view. This is pretty nice. And I can just totally see, I'm gonna be asking my kids, don't scrape the leather. Oh yeah, finally in my own Raptor. Powered up. Of course, the key fob that is included with the truck, it is a Raptor key fob and it does include uh, lock unlock as well as remote start. And I love having remote start on the key fob. I don't have to go into a fiddly app and hope that I have internet access. I just need to be within like 50 feet. Boom, it'll start up. Now, in terms of seating position, this seat is amazing. I have such good support, and I do get some adjustments. I have a lumbar support, forward, back, all power. Uh, nice thing is that also my passenger gets all the same settings as well. Uh, they're not uh, in the lesser seat. Now, I would like probably a lower leg support. I think that would be nice, especially at the pricing that they have this at, but I think this is actually pretty good. Now, the steering wheel is amazing. Uh, it is leather wrapped. It has, of course, more of these orange accents that you can find throughout the cabin. You definitely know you're inside a Raptor when you get into this thing. Uh, we have the big paddle shifters on the back, which feel great. Uh, we have integrated adaptive cruise control functions on the left. On the right, we get all of the Raptor specialty stuff, including steering feel, suspension settings, uh, which we can adjust the dampers between standard, sport, and off-road, and then even exhaust note. Let's try the notes. So this is normal. 
Okay, not bad. I like those turbos. <laughs> uh, now we'll go to sport. Pretty good. And then finally we have Baja, which is the fully open off-road use only mode. Ooh, that sounds good. We'll do some more passing tests a little bit later so you can hear what they sound like at speed. Uh, now we also get an R button here, which is my mode, and that allows me to basically have a special configuration that I want that includes the four-wheel drive settings, traction control systems, and the exhaust, and all that kind of stuff. I haven't set it up yet though. I mean, I just got this thing last night. Uh, this is my first time actually like spending a moment to look at it, and it's pretty cool. Uh, light years ahead of my old Tremor, which granted was based on a decade old design when it finally came to the US in 2019. And then my Tremor was an update in 2022. This, this is light years ahead. Now the controller on the Raptor is unique to the Raptor. Some people like it, some people don't. I'm cool with it. I don't mind a slightly lower profile uh, shifter. It's still in the PRND format with a manual button on the side, very easy to use. This is something I, I feel like you can get used to very easily. Um, it also, of course, has more of that contrast stitching as well as the leather wrap. Over here, we have drive modes, and this feels a little chintzy. One thing that is neat is that this is a multifunction dial. When you're normally driving, you can switch between different drive modes. There are many. Uh, or if you're in towing and backing up, you can use this as a pro towing controller so you can control left right it'll automatically steer um, kind of a neat function we'll play with that again in a later video uh, and then of course we have four high four low and a four auto i love the fact that i have a truck that has four auto because in the pacific northwest we get a lot of mixed conditions where it's a little snow a little dry a little wet a little snow a little dry a little wet and you just don't know should i be in four high or should i be in two wheel drive well now you don't have to worry about it four auto will take care of that um, and then of course, the elephant in the room is this massive touchscreen display. It's over 12 inches large. It's a vertical display, which is an interesting choice. Although that seems to be what Ford is going with because their Mach-E has a similar setup. Um, I do like that we have physical controls for the climate on the bottom here, and then everything else is in the touchscreen or you can use voice commands to do a lot of it. Uh, for example, set temperature to 68 degrees. Setting temperature to 68 degrees. Okay, that's pretty easy. Uh, in here, we also have XM satellite radio, navigation. Uh, there's even a fun little sketch pad app uh, where we can uh, get funny with it. Just right, Raptor. Yes. Raptor. My kids might have fun with that on a road trip, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Their iPads are so much better. But anyway, uh, you can actually do little sketches. You can save them, all that kind of stuff lots of views this has a surround view system and i'm so happy that i finally have a system with a front camera and it's a good one too so down here we have a little multi-function trail button that puts this screen into a trail mode uh, where it basically will give us tracking lines for the front wheels when we're driving ahead so we can see how those tracking lines you know where the wheels are going to be placed uh, when i'm out independently on the trail i don't have to get out and spot myself quite so often if i have a decent trail camera because sometimes it's just one of those like you're getting out for confidence and then the camera will give you confidence because you can see where things are going to go with your wheels that is really nice and frankly it kind of is nice for parking lots too in the lower section here, we can configure that to be either uh, the off-road mode view, which shows you all of the current settings of your vehicle, uh, the gauges that show you tilt and slant, uh, and then also um, you can do a parking view if you want. Now, this is also kind of funny. This is where they put the locking diffs. It's in this little screen. Uh, it's a little push button down there. And yeah, you can lock the rear diff even in two-wheel drive, which not all trucks will let you do that. Uh, but if you want to put the front locker on, you do have to be in four low. And that kind of makes sense to me because if you're in such a tricky situation, you need the front locker, yeah, you're going to be in four low anyway. So that makes sense. Uh, but two-wheel drive with a rear locker is very fun. So glad they have that there. In terms of connectivity, yeah, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are supported, and they are supported wirelessly, which is a nice thing to have. I'm still trying to figure out this menu. Okay, there we go. Uh, when you are connected, there's a little 
CarPlay button up at the top, and in here you can, of course, use the built-in maps, music, uh, and you can use an app like, you know, an OnX app for off-roading, that kind of stuff, if you want something that's a little bit more detailed than what you get with the built-in maps. In my drive home from the dealership yesterday, which is about a 60-mile drive, it did disconnect at least once, just when I was driving, so I'm not sure how solid this system is right now because it is pretty new uh, so we're going to keep an eye on that as we move ahead with new videos uh, also we do get a charger down here uh, for wireless charging uh, furthermore we get turn off auto start stop we also have traction button there and then there is the auto park button for parking assistance i never use that so i'm not even going to look at it up here we do get auxiliary switches if you want to hook up some extra lighting and then a place to put your sunglasses which i had that in my tremor I use that all the time uh, and then over here you get of course the sun visor which is nice Ooh, you get a mirror with lights uh, and then also have uh, the home link buttons here three of them integrated the seating position can be stored in three stages of memory which is nice uh, headlights are led get fog lights that are led the sound system here is a bno system and this one should be fine. I had the B&O system in my Maverick FX4. It was good, it was very good. Uh, glove boxes are kind of funny here. We actually get two glove boxes, one lower one, one upper one, and then we also have this little rubberized sill for putting accessories and stuff, which is nice. I don't know what that little symbol means. I can't read it, it probably says, don't light on fire or something. Uh, over here, we do get a tow controller, which is nice, a brake controller for towing. Uh, and then we get a bin in here, which has a 12 volt socket. Okay, well, that is the complete tour of the interior. And man, there's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, one thing I will say is this big tablet does worry me a little bit simply because, I don't know, this is an off-road truck. I mean, is dirt and grime gonna get on this screen and scratch it up something brutal? Probably, <laughs> but, you know, we'll see. We'll see what the ownership experience is like for as long as I keep this vehicle. And how long am I going to keep this vehicle? I have absolutely no idea. We'll just play it by ear. Uh, oh, finally, even though this is a exciting off-road Baja style truck, it actually still has all the active safety stuff you would want and need in today's environment. You have blind spot warning, collision mitigation, cross traffic alerts, sensors, front and back, parking sensors, uh, it also has adaptive cruise with lane centering. I mean, what more do you need, right? Okay, that's all of the interior. I know it was a long walk to get here, but there's a lot of stuff in this truck. So let's start driving and see how it all comes together. I'm kind of glad they at least didn't go with like the orange seat belts. That would have been a bit much. So here we are finally driving my brand new 2024 Ford Ranger Raptor, and I am stoked. So normally at this point, I would get into the truck, I would do some zero to 60 runs, we'd pound through the gears, have some fun with it. However, and there's a big however here, this is a brand new truck off the lot. Unlike press cars, which come to me pre-broken in, this truck it only has 200 miles on it, and I drove them to drive this truck home. <laughs> we haven't broken it in yet, and that, mm, that makes it difficult for me to like really stress the vehicle. Uh, and I don't know how long I'm gonna keep this truck for. I might keep it you know, for a few months. I might keep it for a few years. I haven't decided yet. All opportunities are open to me. And so I kind of want to break it in right and breaking in a truck, according to Ford's own manual here, is 300 miles to break in the tires. Okay, I'm pretty close to that. And then they expect you to do up to a thousand miles of low rev, no stress driving. Well, I got a ways to go here. And uh, bopping on the freeway isn't quite enough because you can't just keep it humming at the same RPM. They expect varying RPMs throughout the range. Now granted, you can do that on the freeway by popping through gears and stuff like that. Uh, but I've only had this truck for uh, 24 hours at this point. I haven't had the opportunity. But I wanted to get you a video as soon as possible. So I'm gonna push it as far as I can go, but sticking true 
to the break-in documentation. Now, again, I bought this truck. I will have lots of videos about it, but I thought it was really important to first have an introduction to the truck, cover all the features, uh, show what can do and cannot do out of the box, you know, all the basics. And then once we get those out of the way, then we can start doing some more extreme off-road adventures where we need the front locker, where we're going to test all the ground clearance and maybe even test to see if that plastic cover on the fuel tank is sufficient. I don't know. Not sure if I want to wait to break it or if I want to just replace it before it breaks. Haven't quite decided that yet. So basically, the world is open to me here and I'm just going to try to take it cautious to start with, first of all, to give this a proper break-in period. Now, that's also because if I do ultimately get rid of this truck, I will be selling it and it will go to an owner, not just go to the crusher. Many of the cars that we test, they end up going to the crusher because they are not licensed uh, to be sold in the US. This is a proper truck that somebody, if it's not me, if I don't hold on to it for years, somebody might. So they will appreciate that I'm doing proper break-in procedure. So this gives me an opportunity to cover kind of some of the daily driving aspects of this vehicle. First off, seating position, quite good. I feel very elevated. Even though this is a big boxy hood, I don't really feel like I'm rolling, you know, the Titanic down Main Street with this thing. I feel like I can kind of tell where the wheel placement is. And I also don't think that, you know, my view ahead is too obscured by this squared off hood because it is slightly sloped, which does give me a little bit more um, visibility around the corners. The steering wheel feels great. These seats are a little on the firm side, but they're nicely contoured. They have excellent bolstering, and of course the ability to adjust the lumbar is a good thing. Uh, although that's not too surprising in a truck of this cost. Yes, you would definitely expect it to have a power lumbar, and it does. Paddle shifters, they are responsive. This is a 10-speed automatic, which is the most speeds in any truck you can buy today. Uh, does that matter? Well. I don't know. We'll see long term. We'll do a road trip with this and then we'll find out. Now, there, you can do the paddles and they will momentarily let you shift the gear. Give a little throttle there. But if I want to lock it into manual mode, I hit the button down here on the shifter and now it is going to lock it into the actual gear. And of course, it won't let you over rev or under rev. It does have protections in place. I do like that on the steering wheel button here, I can quickly switch uh, between steering feel. There is normal, there is comfort, and there is sport. Sport will give me the heaviest feel of the wheel. I actually rather like that. There is really nice road feel actually in this truck, which I'm, you know, you don't usually get in these off-road trims, but this one, they've done a really good job with that. More on that later as we talk about suspension. Comfort kind of loosens it up, but you know, I honestly think normal is totally fine for around town. Uh, we do have, the dampers can be adjusted again on the steering wheel. So you never have to take your hand off the wheel and dig into the menus. You can just be driving right here and I'm changing my damper settings. I love that. So we got three settings here, normal, sport, and off-road. Uh, that will adjust whether it's firm, soft, and then it is a responsive system. So it will adjust on its own as well within those parameters. And then finally, we have the exhaust note where we can <laughs> adjust between quiet, normal, sport, and Baja. And once we get to the Peninsula Proving Ground, I'll do some drive-bys at the various uh, exhaust noises so you can hear those. You know, one of the hallmarks of a Raptor trim is that it's not just a super fast truck or reasonably fast truck. Uh, it also is very comfortable because that Baja derived suspension actually allows for, you know, rough roads. You can drive down a rough road pretty quick and it absorbs all of those, you know, problems in the road. So like, you know, whether you're going down Baja or whether you're going down a road in New Jersey, uh, it's going to soak up all of those potholes, those ditches, or the boulders that you're yumping over. I mean, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a suspension setup that really lends itself to comfort uh, in all conditions, especially when you have one like this. Uh, of course, because we have those Fox adaptive dampers and they are really quite good on this. Now in the corners, not a lot of roll. This has a Watts link in the back that helps keep things level, but also allows for a lot of articulation off-road. That's a cool setup. Uh, we do get independent suspension on the front with coilovers, and that allows this vehicle to be comfortable on the road. And that's one reason why this truck 
is so nice to drive every day. It's that suspension on the front. But yeah, going around the corners, you know, it just, it, the feel is there. Now, when we push it, will that feel maintain? Well, that's a subject for another video. And we got lots of videos planned for this truck, so you're definitely going to want to hit that subscribe button. Right now, I am driving around in two-wheel drive, and we do have lots of different drive uh, settings here. Uh, two high, four high, four auto, and four low. And with four low, you get a crawl ratio of about 68 to one, which is, I think the only truck better is a Rubicon. I'm pretty sure that, no, actually, I'm sure that is at least 10 to 15 better uh, than what you would find on the ZR2 or even the new Tacoma. Uh, and that's thanks to the fact that this has a 10 speed automatic. They have all the gears to play with. Something that you don't see in drive modes in a lot of vehicle is the ability for the drive mode to really reach deep into the settings. Uh, most drive modes in a, like a crossover, for example, will adjust the traction control, maybe the steering feel, maybe the all wheel drive system, maybe the suspension. This one, it does all of that, but it also goes one step further and will actually set up your four wheel drive system appropriate to the conditions. And we got lots of settings here. Uh, from normal to off-road to Baja to rock crawl to sport to tow to slippery. And, um, and I think that's really important because a lot of people who own trucks and like trucks and consider themselves, you know, solid truck owners don't know when to use for low and when to use for high or when to use for auto. And it really, it, it helps make vehicles like this more accessible to more people and that, I think, is a good thing. I mean, we don't need gatekeeping by making everything manual and bewildering. I mean, <laughs> make it easy, right? Now, you do have to dip into the touchscreen here for a lot of stuff, specifically the aircon stuff. Yeah, you do get basic controls in physical uh, dials and buttons at the bottom, but if you want to change your zone or something like that uh, for the cooling or the heat, you need to dive into the menu. Don't love that. Also, um, the seat and steering wheel warmers, those are also in the menu. I would much prefer for those type of things to be physical switches so I can just hit them without looking. I mean, even the Subaru Cross truck that we have a long-termer for, that one, yeah, just boop, just hit the switch, you're good to go. You No hunting around on the screen. Um, although they did put X mode in the screen, which is kind of annoying. Now, in terms of safety, we have all the basics, you know, collision, blind spot, rear traffic, yada, yada. Uh, but we also have adaptive cruise control here, as well as a speed limiter. That's a very European thing. Uh, but this truck is an international truck. This is the same truck that you would buy in the UK or Australia with some minor differences. Uh, but let's go ahead and try the adaptive cruise. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. Lane keep is on as well. So it'll detect those lanes and keep us in the middle. I get a little icon in the right. And boom, it's doing great. Now, if a vehicle is in front of us that's going slower, we'll slow down to match that vehicle. But right now, we're just cruising. It's keeping it on center. It's doing a good job. It is telling me to put my hands back on the wheel because it is not a hands-free system, but I do like to test it without hands just to see how well it tracks. And this one does great. The digital gauge cluster here, I actually rather like. Um, it's very easy to read. It has lots of information. I love the fact that it has that grid on top that shows me coolant temperatures, transmission temperature, as well as, of course, how much fuel I have. Uh, and then, of course, I can very quickly pop through a bunch of other settings. I, I can look at four-wheel drive setup. Um, I can look at angles, which is great because this does have an inclinometer built in. And unlike Toyota's inclinometer, that basically gives you uh, 30 degrees or zero and then a couple ticks in between but no actual numbers this one gives you the exact angle that you're at which I like everybody should do that okay so on the street this truck is super comfortable it has all the features you would want honestly you buy this you would feel like you got what you paid for even though this is a relatively expensive truck it has a long list of standard features and I like that the interior in this truck compared to my Ranger Tremor, it's night and day. I mean, the Tremor feels like a distant memory from 1996. You know, <laughs> it had all those hard plastics and tiny screen and, you know, traditional gauge cluster. It was comfortable and I did enjoy driving that truck a lot. 
but this truck it is just next level in fact i'm a little nervous about scratching it or you know damaging anything because it's nice i mean even up here it's not hard plastic like it was on the tremor this is a soft material that is also treated so it doesn't reflect on you i mean little things like that they make a big difference <laughs> okay still in break-in period don't get too excited don't get too excited calm driving calm driving i'd like to also call out uh, the chevy owners yeah i can turn my headlights on with a switch i don't have to go into the menus on the infotainment system because that's stupid <laughs> Now let's dip into some of the off-road features over at our Peninsula Proving Grounds. For the first test here, I want to see how loud these various exhaust notes are. So we have four different settings, Quiet, Normal, Sport, and Baja. So let's go ahead and start with Quiet. I basically have a camera right behind me. I'm just going to smoothly accelerate away. This isn't a full throttle um, out of the gate, but I will give it a little bit of juice. And I am in four auto, so I don't slip so much here. Let's listen to each sound, and here we go. So that was shifting at 3,500 RPM. Uh, now I'm going to change the exhaust note to normal. Same thing, accelerate. Uh, that shifted a little higher. 4,500 RPM. Now switching over to sport mode, and away we go. And then finally, we have off road only Baja mode. Let's listen. Yes, off road only. Thank you. Oh! Yeah, that, that is a big difference. <laughs> The Raptor is essentially a Baja truck. It's designed for high speed off-road conditions, kind of like this. I just wish I had a longer driveway. <laughs> but going back and forth here, I can really feel the suspension. Like, it is so predictable and so smooth. It smooths out all these dips and dives in the road and really just, it makes it so much fun. I'm not getting beat up, but I also have so much control. Of course, the Ranger Raptor also has a locking front and rear diff, which means that you can also do more articulate off-road stuff like rocks and trails. Let's test that out. And I'm actually curious, does the quick stuff make the off-road articulation worse? Uh, we're going to find out right now by going through the trail that we have here. This is the Fun Forest. It's our easy trail, and it's just where we're going to get started. And this is a big challenge to standard crossovers, but it won't be any challenge for this truck. I'll show you. Now, I am going to be in... Let's say, let's just pretend we're, we don't know what we're doing. We have no idea what's going on. I'm just going to go ahead and switch this to off-road mode. Now, what do we do? It shifts from the four auto that I was in to four high, which basically gives us a 50-50 split. It also locked the rear differential. That's interesting. Don't think I really need that, but okay. Let's see what it does. So there's no like sway bar disconnect or anything like that on this truck. Uh, basically, the articulation is just built in. I love these sensors. Those are really cool. And I have tracking lines in front with this really nice trail camera. I think my biggest concern for this course isn't if we can get through it, because obviously that won't be a problem. Uh, but really, can we fit? I think I've taken anything this big through here yet. And of course, this ain't that big. I mean, compared to the big boy F-150 Raptor. Now we're gonna dip down, and in the back you might even see that Watts link working. There we go. Boy, the bigger it is, the more the tilt feels. Just get back up here, super wide, but with the cameras, I can feel really confident. Ooh, that is wide. Oh, worth it. Then inches over there, like literally inches. Yikes. And 
go around here. This is normally where a vehicle will lose traction, but here I just put throttle on because we have a hard lock. Power just goes to the wheels. It just does. Nice. Easy. Bring it on. I know I need to do a tight turn here, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off uh, my rear locker, which actually is in the touchscreen, unfortunately. I'd much rather have it be a push button, but I guess you can't have everything. I'm going to watch that tail Let's go over the last hump. Boom. More than 10 inches of ground clearance. No problem. And now the logs, which should be no big deal. I don't want to hit them too hard, though, because then I'll ruin the course for other vehicles I want to test on it. So I'm going to kind of crawl over them. But I am in four high, so this isn't my lowest crawl mode. We'll dip into four low in just a little bit. Okay, over the logs, no problem. Are you seeing the big difference here with a truck like this versus, well, a non-off-road purpose truck? Yeah, it takes twice as long to get through anything if you can get through it in the first place. Yes! Having a front camera is a game changer for off-road. It really is. Because, you well, I can tell I'm not going to make this corner. <laughs> um, it, it just allows you to see the world around you so much better. There's nothing bad about that. Yes, you can off-road without it. And yes, you can get a spotter and all that kind of stuff. But... I mean, with a camera and good sight lines, you can get through anything. It's tight, but we fit. Over the rocks, oh yeah, I forgot there were rocks there, because Raptor, doesn't matter. Okay, well now let's try something a little trickier. <laughs> so the first section of the off-road trail, we just blew through it in four high. That was totally fine. At this point, I'm going to try out some of the... Yeah, some of the deeper tools that this truck has available. I'm going to start with uh, what they call trail control. Now this works both in four high and four low. We're in four high right now and I have the rear locker on. Uh, basically this is a cruise control for off-road. Toyota calls it crawl control. Eh, basically the same thing. Or is it? <laughs> Let's see. So I'm in trail control mode and I now can use the set button on the adaptive cruise control uh, what was normally the adaptive cruise, uh, to set the speed. And my minimum speed in four high is one mile per hour. So I took my foot off the brake and let's just see what this does. We're in off-road mode, which automatically turns on that rear locker and four high and trail control. Let's see what goes on outside the vehicle. The tires here have enough grip that I don't really think this loose surface is gonna be much of a challenge. It's more just to kind of see the features and get you know, a feel for this truck before we head into much more challenging adventures. The camera is really adding a lot of confidence for me right here. I mean, this isn't very narrow ridge. And the fact that I can actually see where the road is, is great. Now, if I wanna go faster, obviously, I can just hit the switch on the side here and we can go a little bit quicker. But right now, I'm feeling pretty good. This is the biggest thing I've taken up here so far. I did drive my Tremor through here several times, so I know it'll fit. Well, the Tremor fit. So this next section here is actually gonna be testing our approach angle and our departure. Uh, it's a ditch. And my old truck, the 2022 Tremor, had, uh, what was it, about a 30 degree approach angle. This one's a little bit better at 33. However, it doesn't even come close <laughs> to what the Gladiator has, which is I think like 40 or 50 or something ridiculous. And even the Toyota Tacoma is a little bit better. So uh, that is one of the downfalls of this truck, but let's see if it's enough to get through this ditch. And it should be because I was able to get my tremor through here, no problem. And by no problem, I mean barely get through. <laughs> 
Oh, you know what? I actually want to crawl slower. So let's go ahead and switch this into, actually, you know what? I'm not going to manually do things. Let's do the drive mode and go to rock crawl. And that, switch into neutral. It's telling me what to do. Okay, now that we're in four low, that'll give me my maximum crawl ratio, which is around 68 to one, uh, which is, I think, best in the class. Uh, outside of a Gladiator, a Jeep Gladiator Rubicon. Those, those have like insane crawl ratios. But um, this is better than everything else in the class. So let's see what that feels like. Go over. Okay, I can see the ditch in the camera, which is good. Go down, Let's see if there's any grinding on that skid plate. Oh, none. Nice. That. Nope. You know, the tow hitch, which hangs really far out, did not hit. Excellent. And oh man, this crawl ratio? Oh yeah, this is great. I am slugging along. Fantastic. Okay, well now we got the ditches to test out articulation. Man, I am feeling this extra three inches over the standard Ranger. This thing is really wide. And then into the ditches, this will let us test out the articulation to see if it is any good. I'm expecting good results though. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off that rear locker, just not something that I need for this. See how high those wheels pick up, and also more important, how deep they tuck into the chassis as we go over these. How does that look on the outside? But it looks pretty good. It feels pretty good from in here. Nice. We're still just continuing on. This is more just crawling because we're going downhill. You can see some of that articulation on the outside of the truck. We'll go down this steep hill. And then go up on the bank a little. And then tight corner. Now luckily this does have 33 inch tires, which means you get a lot of sidewall because there's only a little 17 in there, which is nice. Uh, so it's going to be less likely that we're going to scratch going through the rock garden, but let's give it a try. Of course, now that we've gone down, it's time to go back up. And we're going to go uh, via the rock garden. Listen for any dinging on the underside of any rocks. We're just going to slowly crawl through this. And I hope we don't get any scratches or any weirdness. Love that camera system. Oh, and one thing camera systems don't do is they don't show you your clearance. So I'm going to just quickly pop out here and door. It's not too bad. Given its width, I definitely need to bring it more over here. Yeah, because those rocks are going to get a little, um, as I turn the corner, it's going to start hanging up on them. So yeah, let's bring that over. Drive more to the right. Love this crawl ratio. And I think according to the camera, we'll be fine in the front, even though I don't feel like we will be. Up, oh, and then we're lifted up. Nice. Let's keep on going on this line. We're gonna dip down. No scratching. Now we got a little bit of power needs to go down. Climb, yes. Right. Cool. Got through that. That crawl ratio, amazing. And then of course its ability to put power down, especially with these super wide tires, just gives you so much grip. For the final battle, we have Ranger Raptor versus the ditches again, but this time we're going uphill. And I actually want to see how good trail control is. Uh, in more complicated power shifting situations. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. That's in the software there. And then I can use 
the buttons here, and it's giving me a one mile per hour, which is interesting, because I'm in four low. Why is it still one mile per hour? It seems like it should be slower. If it was one mile per hour in four high, shouldn't it be a multiple less? Whatever. Anyway, it says it's one mile per hour. Oh, it's barely one mile per hour. Like one mile per hour is the tops now. We are crawling through. Okay. I guess that's kind of acceptable. Right at six degree tilt, five degree climb. And uh, we're not to the ditches yet, but we'll be there eventually. <laughs> I'm, I just marvel at how good that front camera is. With so many manufacturers still going cheap with their cameras, that one's really good. So I'm just going to keep that on and I do have, nope, I do not have my rear locker on. So this is just software. How good can software get us through? Oh, it's not liking it. It's increasing speed. Okay, let's, let's go ahead and calm this down. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put on my rear locker at this point. And now we'll just let it continue again. And oh yeah, no problem. That is why you have a rear locker. Now, of course, this truck also has a front locker, but currently nothing on this trail is really requires a front locker. Uh, we'll add something in a little bit as we're slowly building out this location. Uh, but wow, I have to say, I am absolutely impressed by this truck. It is so much more capable, so much more capable than my old Tremor was. It, I mean, and it has a price tag attached to it as well. But I've driven the ZR2, I've driven the Gladiator Rubicon. I have to say, this is my new favorite truck, which is good because I just bought it. <laughs> but I have no, I, I don't have to like this truck. I mean, I spent a lot of money on this thing. I could sell it tomorrow for more than I just bought it for. But I love this truck. It is so good at so many things. And you just can't say that about a lot of the options on the market. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Obviously, we have way more stuff we're going to be doing with this truck in the near future, so be sure to hit that subscribe button. You're not going to want to miss it. Where do you want us to go with this truck? Post a comment below. The world's our oyster, right? <laughs> Let's go have some fun in it. Nice. Can't wait till this thing is broken in. Time to go home. <laughs>